All right. All right. All right. So, so, go ahead. Welcome, people, to the Light versus Renegades of Hell quarterfinals of the Zeke TV and Six Pool Gaming Pro League. As we just check up um, with the teams, um, if the delay on the stream is fine and. They all seem to agree with it. Um, oh my god, I'm really looking forward to this game, to these games tonight. Two good teams facing up. Of course, Renegades of Hell, a bit the unknown, the underdog. But yeah, you never know in StarCraft it's gonna go either way. I don't. I know Light, of course. I mean, who doesn't? And yeah, <laughs> this should be interesting. It should be great. But yeah, I, I kind of know. Well, as far as I know, the two best, the two most known players are S on Light and Kawaii, of course. I think those two players are either gonna be the first they play out. Uh, last time uh, in the last round, let me quickly check actually who Light played in the last round. Light played uh, Tactical Carnage and Kawaii Rice all killed their entire team so perhaps they want to do they want to show the same card or do they want to play out someone else cuz yeah I don't know <laughs> we're gonna have to I wait would, I would throw the same card in my opinion but that's just me hmm so you get uh never mind alright sorry <laughs> So yeah, we're just waiting for our game to be set up by our admin, and then we just jump straight into it. So what do you think will be the first matchup? Well, Light is rolling with a very, very heavy um, Terran Protoss based team, while Renegades of Hell is rolling mainly with Zergs and Protoss. So the potential is there for a lot of PvP, but... I think they're gonna play out. A, we're gonna see a, a TVP. Uh, yeah, a TVP first. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> but <laughs> you never know. <laughs> and the guys from Light are already joking in the chat. <laughs> who's, the who's the who's the who's the manager? <laughs> Yeah, as we get going, uh, what is the chat actually expecting of tonight's games? I mean, I have pretty high hopes, as I said, so... I don't know, what are you guys expecting? What does chat expect? Yeah, I mean... <laughs> it's always a good question to ask, right? I mean, they're the crowd watching. And yeah. We're just providing the games for them. But, actually, looking at Whirlwind, it wouldn't be bad for Renegades of Hell to play out a Zerg. It's a pretty solid Zerg map. So... I'm just very curious. We'll have to just be patient, wait it out. And see who gets picked. Yes. <laughs> pick me, pick me. Anyway, um... This is the quarterfinals. So, pretty high stakes. The winner gets a thousand dollars. Well, not not a thousand dollars. The split pot. How much was it again? Was it six hundred, three hundred, hundred? I don't remember correctly. Uh, I think first place is six hundred. Second place is two fifty. And third then one fifty for third. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's that sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. Six hundred for the team. I mean, you can get a nice barbecue with that, right? <laughs> or you could just buy a lot of beers. Yeah, I mean, or, 
Or you can use the money to send your players to like live events, like uh, Dreamhack Winter is upcoming. I don't know if yes. we will finish before Dreamhack Winter. I think Dreamhack Winter is this weekend. But anyway, to start off, we'll also give out a shout a shout out to Zeke.com for organizing this tournament and Six Pool Gaming for providing the prize money. Without them, this wouldn't be possible. So Dirk, are you excited about uh Wait, do you guys celebrate Thanksgiving? No, we don't. Oh, oh yeah. They call me Derek. I mean, Dirk is like a dagger, isn't it? Hmm, yeah. <laughs> in, mo in most role-playing games, it is. <laughs> yeah. Well, for Thanksgiving, I'm going to be having some delicious turkey, some mashed potatoes, mac and cheese, stuffing. Oh, no, no, we don't have Thanksgiving here. I mean, what is it actually about? <laughs> uh, it's something about Indians and turkey and feast and something. I don't know. Well, I think Indians gave us food one day in the past, and we were all like, "All right, let's make this a holiday." <laughs> if you say so, man. Yep, that that's how Thanksgiving started. <laughs> <laughs> Let's quickly give the guys in the chat the link for the stream. Um, oh, Thanksgiving. Well, I saw things about Thanksgiving in like South Park episodes and stuff. That's why I never know Thanksgiving like properly from. <laughs> Where they shoot the turkeys and stuff. Hmm. <laughs> 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 they are going to play a Zerk. Oh no, it's just observers it seems. Nothing is for sure yet. We don't know. Uh -huh. Celia is going to be the first player, it seems, or is this going to be another observer? Uh, I, might I, be it's a, getting confusing, man. <laughs> uh, with everybody in light saying that I'm the manager, it's kind of, it get, does get confusing. Well, I think it's funny. <laughs> Alright, and it looks no. like it is a Zerg. No, no. Yeah. never mind. No, it's it's gonna be Tilia, the rest are observers. We're just waiting for Renegades of Hell's player to join the lobby. And the admins are trolling get... us. Mm. Thinking that we have a game, but we actually don't. We'll have a game soon. It's gonna be all good. A pink Karen. Hmm. You got a problem with pink? Uh, well, uh, maybe. Unless it's on a Zerg. Then it, then it <laughs> makes it great. Because you can keep the replays and study them? Yes. <laughs> I would do exactly the same. <laughs> um, actually, from complexity, I, I saved a couple of good replays. Um, yeah, some pretty good stuff in there. But, and perhaps we will get the same to get it today with Light. Who is switching races? No. Zerg, Terran, Zerg, Protoss, random, Terran, Zerg, Protoss, random, Terran. And it looks like we have two people well, for Light. Well, Tilia is actually not on the roster on Zeke.com. I don't know, maybe name changed. I don't know that. <laughs> maybe. And there is the other player. No, no, don't, don't oh. call it. Don't call oh. it. Oh, right, right. <laughs> the admins could be trolling us again. Yeah, Kidin is a Zerg player. And, yeah, as I said, Tilia is not on the roster on Zeke.com, so I have no idea. Well, he's either a pros or a tear, and that's, how, that's, how, that's all I know, really. <laughs> So, 
looks like we're gonna have a TVT as our first matchup. It's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be a very long. No, what what am I saying? It's gonna be a TVT. <laughs> Skidin TV. is listed as a Zerg player. Ah. Uh. Yeah, I really hope we can get going soon, cause yeah, I'm running out of things to talk about. <laughs> yeah, fried chicken is the evolution of fried eggs. Interesting fact, right there. Very interesting. What do you? Pr I prefer fried chicken, honestly. But what was first, the fried chicken or the fried egg? Fried chicken. <laughs> but mm. the chicken comes out of the egg. No, the <laughs> egg comes out of the chicken. <laughs> you don't get it, right? <laughs> uh, sure. it's, the, it's the eternal question. Um... <laughs> well, I think it obviously has to be about the chicken coming first. Let's not have this discussion. It's going too far already. I don't know. We... What what does chat think? Hold on, I'm gonna ask them in. <laughs> Chicken or egg? Let's see what ROH and Light think about this discussion right here. Ah, it's night slides. All right. Thanks for that info, Matt. So, it's gonna be a TVZ, and we get going. Alright, as we jump back into our game, catching the back end on the loading screen on GSL Whirlwind, we're gonna have a TVZ between Nightlight, Tilia here, and Kirin from Renegades of Hell. Pretty, pretty solid map for this matchup. Almost guaranteed for some, uh, yeah, some proper macro play. Are you hoping for some macro play or are you just? Expecting like something more aggressive. Ah, uh, aggressive, yeah. bangling bust. Really? Yes. On this map, it's so big. I don't think a bangling bust is gonna be. It's gonna be a surprise, of course. Yeah. Because it's a very wide open ramp at a natural. Yeah, so it's possible. It could happen. Yeah, but it would take so long. Yeah, I think it will be obvious. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, we'll see how the players will open and if DJ's wish comes true and we get a bailing bus, but I'm just hoping for some nice long term micro play. Ugh. Still on the loading screen. What's the time over there actually in America? Three fifteen. Wow. It's like way later there there in Europe, man. <laughs> Quarter past <laughs> nine. <laughs> uh, PM. Yeah, and I have to get up tomorrow morning. Ooh. Yeah, sadly we don't get paid for this. Oh. Wait, we get paid. <laughs> yeah. Dang yeah. It. <laughs> Maybe we will one day. But until then. Uh, we do it for fun. We see. We do. We do it so we can see these awesome players in action. Right. Of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't. We don't do this to get paid. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you're you're almost like a woman there. Like, uh... shut up. <laughs> anyway, spawning in the top left-hand corner, we have Tilia Light, also known as Nightlight. 
And in the top right hand corner we have Kirin from Team Renegades of Hell spawning as a red zerg. Anyway. Actually, have you seen the um the World Championships this weekend? Uh I've seen some of them. I haven't you seen You didn't see the finals? Uh the finals, no, I did not. Uh, come on, it was a PvP finals. How could you probably have why I didn't watch it? <laughs> Which oh, well. one coordinated and which one didn't? I really think it was really awesome. Who was it uh, against? Farting against the uh, creator in the finals. Farting uh, one for four, four two four. Oh no, I'm not gonna four two for one of them. <laughs> I don't want to spoil okay. anything for anyone in the chat. But right. the spawning locations are actually very nice for both players. Uh, actually. The Zerg might have to take the 3 o'clock position. He can't really take the pocket. Because that's third. If that's his plan, of course. But we see a gas first for Nightlight. So we'll be seeing the barracks followed by a factory, most likely, straight after with reactor helions from one base. Yeah. Yeah, that's most, like, that's most likely what's going to happen. It is the most common build in a ZVP. Well, well it's not super common, it's just a very aggressive opener. Rather than getting the expansion and getting the Rector Hellions afterwards. So yeah. We see the hatch first from Kidding, of course. Spawning so, pool followed right after. You as a Zerg player, you always go hatch first, right? Against right. Terran. Yeah. Why is that? Uh, well, you know that the Terran can't really put on anything cheesy like cannon rush or anything. They can and if bunk. you bunker rushes, you can count. People have found ways to counter that. So. Yeah. Well, it's also because the hatch will finish at the same time as the pool, and the creep will be already down. So if if he needs to play some spines, he can already do it on the low ground and still be safe. It just helps, but oh, is Kitty actually going? Nah, this overlord will get away. Thanks you very much, speed buff a few patches ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, or is he? Ah, uh, yes, it gets away. But is he going to go with the marine over there to try and pick it off? No, no he is not. But here we see the swap off from the reactor on the factory. The factory just saying, hurry up! Oh, and will our third player make two extra queens straight afterwards? or Because he's already starting speed, which I like, and keeping one guy in gas so he can eventually get the 100 gas to take the layer, but still have a solid mineral income from that. Because these Hellions now really have to do some damage, because if Kidden can hold it like pretty solid, yeah, um, I feel Knight is gonna be a bit in, in some trouble because he doesn't have the expo afterwards, but I do think he will go for the expo right now. There we go. Looks like the Hellions did get scouted by a Zergling. Yeah, but that's okay. There are still slow links for now, but speed is about to finish 30 seconds. And yeah, the Hellions are going to pick up a few drones. That's one drone. Yeah, you don't have to count them, man. Oh. <laughs> we'll update it later, no problem. <laughs> Speed is like about to kick in right now, and he has enough links to deal with his Hellions, and he catches one and a second one. All right. And he's actually going to counter with his... And... Hmm. Will he have enough Hellions out in time to deal with this efficiently? Or will he have to cancel his base, perhaps? Oh, the Hellions get in a nice choke, but the links do get nice and close. And he did kill the SMB yeah. making the command center. Yeah, well, it delays it slightly, but... Yeah, it's fine.
More links like being made right now with the Hellions. Keep up the pressure. Which is what they should do, because there's no third and fourth queen coming up for Kidin. And I don't know if that's a mistake or is he planning something? Because. Yeah, more Hellions are on the way and he's gonna need those few extra queens or at least some Evos and some Spines to wall off. Because. Yeah, for now the Hellions can get a free run into the main if they want to. But here we see the lift off. This might do some significant damage. See six roaches in production. But some nice damage being done here by those Hellions and there goes the pickoff. Very nice micro. Ah, loses one. But let's have a update on uh, eight drone kills. It's alright. He lost three Hellions total, so still a decent trade. Could have been worse for a Zerg player. And I think he's going to move out with these roaches now and try to put on some pressure back on our Terran player. We do you see an Evo chamber coming down for Kitten? Yeah, it's probably for Cloak on a potential Banshee. And the Banshee gets revealed, so we might see some spores go down already. But the Banshee will help with dealing with this aggression. And with some nice control, the links get cleaned up. We will get cleaned up eventually. <laughs> he might lose some SCVs here. Ah, uh, the roaches aren't moving into it. There we go. A lot of SCVs falling. We see the counter drop going. Or is it just going to be to deal with these links? Looks like he's just going to go kill the lions. Yes. Yeah, because his front is about to be bust soon. If he's not careful, is he, is he going to come in time for a repair with the SCVs? Yeah, it looks like it. He doesn't have enough roaches to bust out the depot fast enough. And this game gone off to a very, very aggressive and action-packed start. What you were hoping, right? It's no, no bailings, but roaches Sadly. instead. Sadly. <laughs> But you gotta play what you gotta play. And we see the layer on the way, getting all the gases. And, and we see two factories coming down for light. So, so it looks like he might just go mech. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Definitely with the plus one uh, vehicle weapons on the way. So now the game gets more of an. Uh, and we see a push out state. from light. Yeah, just with the. Hellion Banshee, but we see the Spore in the natural and in the main as well. So he should be pretty safe against these Banshees, but the Banshees do provide mainly map control right now and prevent creep tumors from going down. Like, if he can keep the Banshees at least near the creep. And we see a Spire coming down for Kitten. That's an okay response. I don't dislike it. At all. <laughs> I mean, who am I to question a pro player, right? Right. <laughs> but if you think about it, but, Light well, doesn't have any. Yeah, but early mutas can cause some trouble for some mech. But if he gets stores fast enough and gets some turrets in time, he's gonna be alright against it. Now, putting some nice pressure on with the Hellion Banshee, and Zerg can't really take a a third base safely here because the creep isn't spread towards it and he doesn't have enough queens to deal with the banshees he only has three queens on the map yeah and that's just not enough to deal with this m amount of banshees one banshee will kill a queen so four will Looks do a like significant amount of damage and with a small link counter well he's just like nope yeah just gets deflected really easily with the, Hel with the hellions Another drop moving towards the base of Kitty. And there's no Overlord in between it either. The Overlords are just stacked over here, so he doesn't know this is incoming, I think. 
Oh, did that Ling see it? I don't think he did. This is going to do a lot of damage. Oh, but the Mutas just pop in time and he's going to know what's up. Is he going to reveal the Mutas though? No, he didn't reveal the Mutas. He's double expanding. But imagine if he sends a Hellion around now to scout and he sees these two bases, they can get locked down easily by the Banshees. But the Banshees don't have cloaks, so the Muras will be more efficient to it. And here we see those six initial Muras flying in, and the Thor is going to deflect them straight away. We see Ventral Sacks coming out, so could Kitten be doing some sort of drop play? Well, Roach Drops seems to be a smart call. That's, that's a normal counter against some mech plays. Abuse the immobility of it by using the Vengeful Sacks with overload speed, obviously, to drop some Roaches or Lings in the main. And yeah, catch the turn of out of position and capitalize on that. Now, the third did get spotted by a Medivac. Yeah, but, but the fourth is still remains undetected for now. Uh, here we see the move out from Knight. The Roach is taking the initial hits from the Hellions, but here come the Banshees. And can he really engage this, you think? With the army he has, as the Zerg player, that is. So this army is pretty solid. Three Thors on the field. You got some SEVs. Yeah, just to buffer. But once those stores get some good volleys on the Muras, and it looks like he's just going straight for the counter attack. Going to pressure the third base. And the third does go down. Yeah, the third drops from our Zerg player, but here comes the counter and. doing a good amount of damage and forcing the lift off. And a drone. Oh, the drone retreat. reveals the the base. Nice spot there, man. And yeah, no way. This is going to put Kitten again. in a bad position. Yeah, and our Terran player lifted up his two bases, so technically they're both on two mining bases. But the Roaches try to bust in, and they do get in and are going to town now, together with the Muras in the natural. And he's pulling back, or is he just... No, he's not pulling back, he's just swinging towards the natural and... We might see an old-fashioned base race here. But the Muras are getting cleaned up, slowly, by these turrets. And the Roaches are going to get picked up too. Yeah. So the push continues. And what can our third player do to hold this? I don't know man, I think our Zerg is a... Oh, here he runs in with the Lings and the Roaches, but does he have anything to do with his Banshees though? Yeah, the damage of the Banshees is just too much and then... One Thor falls, will he get a second one? Or is the damage of the Banshees just too much? Nah, uh, he, he gets... gets yeah, he gets the Thor. But... These five Banshees, man... And we got the next wave incoming. Five tanks, two extra Thors. Look at the supply difference between Kitten and Light. Yeah, Zerg doesn't have a, didn't manage to get a proper third base up. I got denied pretty fast. And again, the the, going for that double expand on the same locations. Well, he has to take a risk to come back into this game. There's just no other option. Knight in the meanwhile is taking another base. It looks like Light Might is oh. pushing out. Oh, I thought he would have made it a planetary over here. So his third is being pressured yet again by Roaches. Yeah, do you think it would have been better if that second uh, orbital there would have been a planetary? 
to deal with these run bys because yeah. they are doing a lot of damage. But here we see the big moving by night on the natural, and the question is, even though the counter from our Zerg player is pretty solid, will he be able to defend this push from our Terran player? I don't, I don't think about he, that. There's too many.